welcome to our August uh, natural magic tutorial. Uh, today, inspired by fall, I hate to say it already, but you know that back to school feeling where fall is coming and the mornings are a little cooler and the evenings are a little cooler and things start to smell a little different. Um, we're going to draw a rooster today. Um, this is probably one of my favorite projects to draw. Um, so we're going to take you through the whole tutorial. Um, you want to make sure you have a pencil. If you need an eraser, grab an eraser. Um, and you want to get, uh, one of your markers because we're going to use that to outline our design. Um, and then we'll deal with our painting materials after. Okay. Um, I always suggest if you feel a little uneasy drawing this for the first time on the canvas, you can always use some paper. Um, feel free to grab some paper and draw it on uh, a piece of paper first before you transfer it over to here. It's always, you know, you can do some practicing before you start if you like. Anyways, we're going to dive right in. I'm going to start on my canvas um, and we're going to have some fun. So I like the joke that the rooster comes from the egg, okay? Um, and you'll understand why I say that, uh, because we're gonna start by drawing an egg. Sort of in the middle of our canvas. Um, notice that I'm not worrying about making it perfect. Now, this is very light. I have to draw a little darker than you should, uh, just so you guys can see it but I want you to keep it nice and light, especially with this, because this is just a guideline. We're not actually keeping this shape in our final piece. Um, it just helps us structure where everything is supposed to go. Okay, so we're going to start with this egg. And inside the egg, we're gonna draw a circle inside of a circle. Okay, and then we're gonna draw a really small circle with a flower, okay? And you can do that a little bigger if you like. I'm uh, not too worried. From here, we're going to start drawing outward to create some of the chest feathers for our, our chicken or our rooster. So I'm gonna come off the front, okay? And we'll just, it's like a little belt. Imagine we're drawing a little belt, okay? Underneath that, we're gonna draw a smaller belt. Okay. From here, we're gonna to go to the side of our circle and draw a squirrel. And then we're gonna jump a forward a little bit around that circle and do another swirl. We're gonna do that one more time. We're gonna jump around We've got some swirls. From these swirls, I'm going to start from the back of my second swirl. I'm gonna come up towards that original egg shape that I drew and come back down. Okay, sort of a similar shape to the belt, but it's not a belt. We're gonna start building some feathers off of this. Okay, so I've just kind of recreated another and I'm going to come around and do this a couple more times. And notice how I'm just jumping over top of all of these little swirls that I started from. So I did five. Okay, if you need some time, just pause the video. That's okay. Then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna draw another belt that attaches that feather to this. And see this section here? I'm gonna just fill that with zigzags, okay? And we're kinda gonna leave this area alone for a moment, okay? Good, 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 good. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna um, look back at this original egg and we're going to go up a small section and draw another egg, okay? This egg is on a different uh, angle much smaller. Uh, I drew it darker because this is a shape that's going to stay. Um, and I'm just going to fill that in with another one just like that. On top of that egg, I'm gonna draw a circle inside of a circle. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to draw its beak. Okay, and then I'm going to put a curve through the beak. And from the bottom of that beak, I'm going to give it its funny little hangy dangly thing. Then I'm going to draw some feather shapes over its head. Okay. You're starting to see the face of our, our chicken, our rooster. Great. Okay. I'm going to start here where the eye, the front of the eye meets the beak. I'm going to curve over top of my bent feathers. So over, and then I'm going to curve up. Okay. And then I'm going to come down. Then I'm going to copy this shape. I'm going to come here. I'm going to go up just like this front edge and I'm going to come down. Okay. Then we're going to go back to the front and we're going to kind of do the same thing up and back. And we're going to give our rooster his mohawk. Okay. And again, take your time. If you have to rewind, watch it again, that's fine. You can even uh, click down in the corner and slow the video down a little if you like, or speed it up if I, I'm going a little slow. Um, okay, and that's basically the, the shape of our rooster's head. Now we're gonna connect the head to the rest of the body. Uh, we couldn't do that without the head first, okay? So right close to this dangly thing, I'm gonna come out here and I'm just gonna draw a spike, okay? Then I'm gonna draw a spike that sticks out from that spike and copy that shape, kind of how we followed those lines. So I'm just going to keep going. Okay, but we're fanning it out. So these lines come together quite closely, but they spread out really far. They fan out. I'm going to do one more. Okay. Now I'm going to come off directly below off to that diagonal, sort of like from the corner down, okay? And I'm going to draw one straight line that's gonna go back, okay? And I'm gonna do that again, a straight line and back, a straight line and back, a straight line there. And then I wanna do one more so it pops off the front of this section. They have nice puffy chests, okay? From here, we can connect those lines. All right. And this is where we start closing in these gaps. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do off the back of this feather here, I'm going to draw that bent feather shape. And I'm going to continue that bent feather shape. Just like that. Okay. In here. We're just going to leave it for now. We're going to fill that in later. We're going to jump to the front. From here, I'm going to draw two feather shapes and enclose the chest of the chicken. Okay. And then we're going to go here, the bottom of these curves. I'm going to draw a feather shape, but this feather is going to be pointy, so it's going to come down and around. And then I'm going to come back up here and try to mimic that same shape and slowly fan things out, but not very much, not as much as we were doing before. Okay. I can break these down a little bit. Add some stems to them. Then we're going to jump back up here and we're going to make a another belt shape. Off this feather here and the belt shape, we're going to create, it kind of looks almost like a saddle. All right, but we're going to break the saddle up into this 
some pointy feather shapes. We can fill those in with some details if we like. I'm going to join those points a little. We're just making it more interesting to look at. Okay, now we're going to copy these shapes and we're going to put them outside. Okay, and I'm going to fill them in with triangles inside of triangles and put some triangles in the spaces between those triangles. And I'm going to draw a big curved feather shape there. I'm going to draw a spike off the top and another spike sticking out from there. I'm going to draw another feather that comes along the same line but breaks out a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to draw another one, but it just sticks out a little, and then another one that sticks out a lot. And then we're just going to fill in this section a little bit with some more spikes. Okay, you might even feel like your chicken needs a, another rooster feather out here. Whatever you think looks good is entirely up to you. Okay, and then off these spikes here, I want you to come in. And draw these sort of like shark fin feathers. Okay, you don't really want them to touch, give them that gap. Then I'm gonna add some details to them. And then we've got to give our chicken something to stand on. So we're going to go back down to the base. I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to draw that belt shape again. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Okay. I'm going to come over here and go one, two. Put one inside there if you need some room. And off this little area here, we're going to put the first rooster's foot, okay? And it's kind of standing. He's holding his one foot up, okay? It's kind of like drawing a tree branch, okay? If you want to draw some little like that. And then his second leg is a little bit more challenging to draw. Okay, so very similar shape here. We're gonna go back that way. We're gonna go in. I'm gonna do that. Like that. Okay, now they have little spurs off the back. And you can break his leg up a little bit with some lines just to make it interesting because the rest is so intricate and detailed. Okay. And then you have that choice of going back in and adding even more detail, but don't make it too complicated. Uh, I'm just gonna break these up a little. I always like to suggest if you wanna add more detail, look for the big areas, the big spaces. Those are the ones that need more detail. Don't add a crazy amount of detail into the small areas. It just makes things more confusing for your eyes. So I'm gonna add a little bit in here, just breaking up some of these shapes. I'm gonna leave that. I don't really want it to be much more complicated. Okay, then just take your handy dandy marker and uh, you're just going to outline everything as best you can.
it's ready for painting, all you need to do um, is grab your supplies. Uh, your supplies will include four colors this month. You have yellow, green, brown, and red. Okay, we're going to use all of those colors for our background. Make sure you get a container of clean water. Okay, um, and get your paintbrush. So the first thing that you want to start with, okay, we're just going to cover that background with lots of water. It doesn't have to be completely saturated, but we just want to scribble some water on there to help our paint travel across the canvas because it's the water that helps the paint walk across the canvas ultimately. Um, Remember, I always say this is the time where you can get a little wild, a little crazy. Okay, so we've got a nice scribbling of water all over the place. Now, each of you would have received um, four colors of paint. We've got some red watercolor paint. We have some brown watercolor paint. yellow watercolor paint, and green watercolor paint. Now, obviously, working with some of these colors, they're opposites, right? Red and green, um, they are opposites. So if you mix them together, they also will make a brown, um, but that's okay. We're going to start with some of our greens and yellows, and then we can add in a little bit of red here and there where we want it. So I'm going to start with the yellow, and I'm just going to... get a little crazy. Remember you should always just hold your finger out and tap with your finger. That way you're not splashing in all directions just towards your canvas. Okay I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm just gonna play connect the dots a little and I don't really have a plan I'm just letting my brush jump around and paying attention to what my eye is seeing and letting my eye decide where I think I need more dots, okay? Now yellow is very weak, okay? So it, um, it'll get taken over by the other color. So you'll wanna give the yellow as much space as you think it needs to start so that when those other colors come in, you already know where you want your yellow. So that's, I'm letting this yellow sort of take over everywhere. I've kind of started to scribble a little bit more to connect these blobs and dots. Just think of sunrise, like a rooster at sunrise is pretty, don't you think? Okay, don't forget around the tail. Okay, then I'm gonna come in with some of my green, okay? I'm gonna get my brush saturated in that green and I'm just gonna sprinkle it in. And now it kind of reminds me of like corn, a rooster on a farm, like a corn farm. And notice how it's all starting to sort of spread out naturally because we have lots of that water. It's helping the paint explore our canvas. We don't have to do any of that work. And we're just doing the work to try and make sure we don't get paint in places we're not supposed to. Okay, now this is where you can decide if you want to help that green paint spread around a little bit more. I'm actually just going to sprinkle some water. Okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle that water onto the canvas. I'm not going to drag it around like I did the yellow. This water will help spread the green paint around a little bit, but it'll also break the green up. It'll force any little drops of green paint that the water landed on to move around because that water displaces the green paint. Okay, so you can see it's starting to swirl around there a little bit. And maybe you like the swirls, maybe you don't like the swirls. It's, it's entirely up to you. Um, I'm just gonna start getting my colors nice and close to my rooster now. I'm just going along the edge. And 
I'm all the way back here and see it's already started to get a little bit connected all by itself. So I'm going to get inspired by that and I'm going to start connecting some of these other parts and pieces. Just, again, I'm not really thinking too much about it. I'm just swirling around my brush as I pay attention to what my eye sees. And you might think, well, of course your eyes see. I'm using my eyes too. But I mean, pay attention to the big picture. Don't focus too much on one little corner. Try to stare at the whole thing at once. Okay, it's kind of a challenge. See if you can do it. Okay. All right. Now see how much that green took over? It's okay, I like it. I like it. Now, this is your choice. You can use some red or you can use some green or, or some brown. Um, I think I'm going to go with brown. I think that's those earthy tones. I think this is what I, I want to see. And I'm not going to, I'm going to use the smallest amount of brown. Just the smallest amount because that's going to be really dark and it's going to take over a little. Uh, there. Okay. See how they're starting to branch out. So I'm just going to come in and touch and add and flick and just spread that out a little bit, but not too much. Not too much. See? Just jumping along again. I'm just paying attention to the big picture. I'm not focusing on one spot. You can teach your eye to look at all the spots at the same time. You sort of start to see the balance of the piece. Okay, that's lots of fun and we're going to leave that there to dry. Okay, so you just finish up whenever you think it looks awesome, leave it to dry, pause the video and come back when it's dry and we'll paint in our rooster. Okay. Okay, so to paint in our rooster, okay. Um, let's start, let's start with, um, our yellow. Okay. Um, we're going to start with the yellow. There's not a lot of yellow. The yellow is very much an accent color. Um, but we're going to put the yellow in our rooster's feet and beak. Okay. Uh, we're also going to add a few little details inside the feathers here and there. Um, but not much. I'm just going to add in a few little yellow feathers here. I'm going to add a few little yellow details over here. We're just really sort of trying to spread some of that color out so that our attention will get spread throughout the painting. Okay, this is more interesting for our eyes to look at when we know that there's all the colors spread out everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to leave the yellow at that because we can always add more later. Um, we can also use the yellow to blend new colors. So I'm going to leave that. Um, I'm going to jump over to our red. There's a lot of stuff that I want to put on here that's red. Um, so we're going to start up at the head. I'm going to give him a nice red crest. All right, that mohawk. Okay, just like that. I'm also still going to be giving him some red around here. Okay, and his, the funny hangy thing under his chin can be red. Okay, I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna fill in these feathers here. I'm gonna make my flower in the middle red. Okay, I'm gonna come back here and do these back feathers red. And again, it's all about spreading these colors out in all directions because that will draw our eye throughout the entire painting. Okay, um, I'm going to only use a very small amount of red. I, I don't want a lot of red on my brush. Um, I'm going to come in like that. I'm going to put some yellow over top of those later, um, but I'm just going to put them in really quickly that and then I'm going to come in I'm going to paint right over that yellow I did earlier and you'll see it kind of changes the color just slightly okay so 
we've got our red feathers back there too. I'm going to grab a little bit of that yellow now. See, now we've got some orange feathers. Um, I'm going to continue with this orange color a little bit um, because it's a nice warm color. And I'm going to add it into here a little. Um, I don't want too much, but I could add a little bit to the feet if I wanted. It doesn't make such a huge difference. There's not a lot of color on my brush, but you could add a little bit of that orange, if you liked, to the feet or to the beak, just to keep it a little interesting. Okay, um, and then I'm going to wash my brush really, really well. I'm going to come back with just yellow. I'm going to paint in these feathers up here yellow. Okay. Now we haven't painted this cheeky circle in with our rooster yet, but we'll come back with some more red later. Okay. Um, so I'm done with my red for now. I'm going to come in with the green. Now the green is really meant to break up these warm colors that we already have. And the green is going to fill in our rooster's tail. If you have uh, leftover paint from some of our other projects, this is a great spot to add in some of that blue or some of that teal turquoise color. Um, Okay, just like that. Then I'm going to go into the middle here because it's I'm all about spreading out those colors. So I'm adding in some green there. And remember, we're waiting. We need to leave some space because we have to put in um, our brown. Okay, so don't be afraid to leave some space for our brown. I'm going to come in. Outline these triangles. front chest feathers green because that needs some green up there so our eye will move around okay I'm gonna put the little green leg band on there okay I'm gonna wash my brush out one more time and then I'm gonna dive into the brown and we're filling in everything that we haven't painted at this point okay except for the cheek okay and if you're like I don't know what to do we'll just watch I'll show you okay a little bit into the tail just to make it a little more interesting you could even add some into your yeah, see how fun that is just breaks things up a little okay and then last but not least give that rooster your little red cheek okay you could have done it before already but okay and that'll just finish things off okay let it dry if you think it needs some more color, you can add another layer of color on to make it a little bit more vibrant. But other than that, that's your rooster, guys. Um, I hope you have lots of fun uh, drawing this guy. I hope you have even more fun coloring him in. Um, I'd love to see some pictures. If you have the opportunity to send in a picture, I would absolutely love to see what you created. Um, I'd even love it to see if you try to teach someone else how to draw this thing and uh, see how they do. So if you've got a little brother or sister, an older brother or sister, and maybe they could learn from you. You could be the teacher, okay? So good luck. I hope you had fun, and uh, I'll talk to everybody soon.